King David had Goliath. Daniel had a lion's den. Moses had a pharaoh with whom he had to go toe-to-toe. Struggles will always be there. But if you want the gold and you refuse to be satisfied with the bronze, then you're going to need to fight that fight instead of become passive and find a way to simply crawl into the image instead of the substance. Can you say amen? And then the third thought that I want to give to you, and by the way, there's a great illustration to that, and that is the thought that, uh, and it's all about codfish. Are you ready? Codfish caught in the northeastern United States. I almost said northeastern, but I decided not to say that. In the northeastern United States, the codfish industry, huge, booming. In fact, there's such a desire for codfish, and I know you're getting hungry now just hearing about them. There's such a desire for codfish that they have to transport them all the way over to the West Coast. So what did they do? They froze them. They froze the codfish and sent them to the West Coast. One problem, when they would thaw them out, they wouldn't taste the same. The taste was gone. Somebody else thought, well, why don't we do something else? We'll put all of the codfish and we'll put them in these large tanks of water. And they did that. And so the codfish are alive until they get to the West Coast. The problem is, in being alive until they get to the West Coast, they were mushy. They were soft. And the taste was not there the way that it was when they were on the East Coast. So somebody thought, well, what should we do about that? And here is what happened. They ended up having these same tanks, put the codfish in, but they entered something into the equation that wasn't there before. They entered in the natural enemy of the codfish, the catfish. And when the catfish went in, they chased those codfish around all the way to the West Coast. And when the codfish got to the West Coast, they were fresh, they were firm, and they tasted great. Oh, that deserves an applause. Wasn't that beautiful? <laughs> Somebody's got to care about the codfish. And they got, to eat, they got eaten in the end. That's true, but they were fresh. <laughs> You've got a natural enemy, and your enemy will try his best to defeat you. Joseph could have let go in the pit, gotten discouraged, gotten bitter. He didn't do it. Could have let go in prison. He didn't do it. The third idea that I want to share with you is that the mere image of gold is not the substance. The greatest leaders in the Bible were not concerned about image. They focused on the substance of the kingdom of God being advanced in their generation. I wonder how many of us really consider this idea of the kingdom of God being advanced in our generation. Otherwise, what happens? We settle for the bronze, which is, I hope I can pay my bills. I hope I can achieve a certain level in my bank account. I hope my wardrobe can be this or that. I hope my car can be this or that. I hope my house can be this or that. And we're settling for things less than the holy purpose that is inside of us for our generation. Abraham Lincoln had a general in the Civil War. that He contacted and he said, I want you to go on the offensive. I want you to attack in a certain battle of the Civil War. The general was apprehensive because he was afraid of what would happen if the battle did not go the right way. He was afraid of defeat, so he didn't want to attack. Abraham Lincoln, therefore, wrote an unprecedented letter. In that letter, these are his words, true historical fact. He says to the general, I want you to go on the offensive. If the battle goes well, you can take all the credit for the victory. If it doesn't go well, I will take the blame completely. His idea? Attack. Why? The general was concerned about his image. But one of the greatest leaders in our nation, if not the greatest, was concerned about the substance. Big difference. If we get into this thing where we get lullabied, where it's all about how we look and how we sound, and that's all that matters is our image. And so many people have gotten into that. If we get into that, we will lose the ability to run this race in such a manner as to win. 
And the Bible doesn't say run it in such a manner as to finish. You can finish, but will you win? Will you get the goal? And I want you to be those at Capital Life Church that embrace the goal. I want you to challenge. I want to challenge you, rather, not to settle. Stand to your feet. I want to pray over you, and then we're going to take communion in just a, a moment here. I want you to fight for what matters most. I want you not to be concerned about image, but to go after substance. And that means there will be moments at which you'll look small. And there will be moments in which people will believe some things that are not true about you. There will be moments in which it looks like somebody has won the battle and you have been defeated, even though you know you have done nothing wrong and you're doing all you know to be obedient. There will be moments in which it would be so easy simply to buy into the image of it all and forget to be intimate in your relationship with God and forget that God's hands being upon you makes the natural turn into the supernatural so you can land the mark and you can win the battle. You don't even have to wait. Rather than partial victory, full victory right now. Let's bow our heads for a moment. I want to pray over you and part of this time of prayer will actually be that we will be having a time of communion.